Okay, now let's practice working with layers, which is one of the hallmark features of Photoshop, and it's a very useful and exciting feature to work with, and you're going to be using it all the time. Okay, so we're going to create a new document, and we're going to actually set up the parameters here so that we have control over our canvas. We're going to create a poster using five images and text. And so let's actually name this document Layers Practice and then your last name. I'm going to all cap my last name of Morris. Okay, let's actually change the inches to pixels. So where it says inches for width and height, change those to pixels. And let's make this documents 2600 pixels wide so change that value there to 2600 by 1625 pixels high we'll leave the resolution at 300 pixels per inch and let's make sure that the color bit is at 8 bit, the color mode. Let's go down here to the advanced section of the panel. And let's set that to Adobe RGB 1998. Okay, Adobe RGB 1998. Okay, we're going to click that. Okay. And it's going to create our canvas here onto which we're going to put images. Okay, let's go to Bridge to get some images here. Okay, and you're going to go to the Practice Picks for Students. So here are some of the images you're going to be working with, and this poster is going to celebrate the thermal features at Yellowstone. Okay, so these are pictures we took on the um, student faculty trip summer 2016, this past summer. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and make a poster. It's going to be a landscape size poster, so kind of like a computer screen um, in terms of its dimensions. And we're going to have a banner at the top of the screen or the image or the, uh, the project that's going to run all the way across. And so we either want to use this one, the Minerva Terrace image here we got, or this uh, Midway Basin um, image here. So let's actually uh, get both of those images, but I'm going to press commands and I'm going to grab both of those image, images. I'm going to open both of them, so I'm going to go I'm going to click command O for open. Okay, now you see that's opening them in different documents other than the document that I wanted to put the images into. Okay, we're going to make sure that it's selected and we're in the Move tool. We're going to grab it. We're going to pause here on the tab and then we're going to continue pressing the mouse, bring it down to here, hold down Shift, and then let it go. Are you sure you want to convert colors? And we're going to push OK for that. Right now it came in really big, but that's okay. We're going to work with that later. Let's do the other image. Okay, you're going to click and hold. You're going to drag that up to the tab of the one we're going to play with. You're going to come back to the middle, hold down shift so it will center, and then it's, you're going to get this message again. Just press OK. Okay, so we do not need these documents anymore. You can press on the tab and then go ahead and X out of that because we don't need that. Okay, and now we're back here in our canvas that we're working with. So you notice here the layers are stacked here in the layer panel. By the way, if this is still showing your libraries panel, you can double click and that will collapse there so you can more easily uh, see this layers panel by moving it up a little bit. Notice these eyeballs here. 
These eyeballs, when they are activated, you see they indicate layer visibility, just as it says. You can hide that layer so you can see what's underneath it by just clicking on the eyeball. Okay, and then we are actually now seeing the background layer, the canvas. And then you can actually see the empty canvas. And remember, checkerboard designates transparency, so that's not really anything except an empty canvas right there. The lock means you cannot move that background. Okay, it's not going to let me move that. If I want to pick it up with a hand tool, it is locked right now. Notice that when you have the eyeball activated, it doesn't necessarily mean that the layer is selected. So you actually have to click on the layer in order for it to be selected and the eyeball is a separate thing there. Let's talk about this background layer. There are three things you can't do with the background layer. You cannot move it. You can't erase the transparency, nor can you change the stacking order. Notice if I try to grab it, it just clicks back down. And as I already showed you, if you try to reposition it, it won't let you do that. Okay. If you try to get the eraser tool, which is here, you can also click letter E to get it. And I've not selected. Remember, you need to select your background layer or whatever layer you're working with. Now, right now, I have this has been reversed. So you do see it erasing to red there in this case. It's the background color currently. Um, usually the background color is black, but if you reverse those, it's going to seem like nothing's happening, and that's probably the way it looks on yours right now. Okay. So if you do this little arrow on yours, it will seem to be erasing to black or whatever color is chosen there as so the background color. Let's also undo that by doing Command Z. Now we can convert this layer into an actual layer. We can convert the background into an actual layer by clicking on this little lock icon over here. Okay, now with the Move tool, which is letter V, if you want the keyboard shortcut, you can now move that background layer. Notice that. Okay, so we're seeing that transparency underneath it. You're also going to be able to erase to transparency. So you can click on here or letter E and you're going to see you're erasing to the what's underneath it which is nothing which is transparency. Okay. I'm going to go back to V. Now we actually don't need this layer now that we have the canvas configured. So and the canvas is going to hold even if this layer is not there because we've already entered those dimensions. So let's go ahead and click on that make sure it's selected and then we're going to press the delete key. All right, now it looks like, uh-oh, where did my layers go? Well, remember they are right now um, invisible and we just need to click the eyeball icons and then they come up back up. All right, so what, what we want to do now, uh, we want to play with changing the order of these layers and all you have to do is click and drag those and then they'll be, uh, they'll switch positions there and you could have many layers here and don't be afraid to play around with that because um, sometimes you worry, oh no, I can't see my image. Well, it might just be under something else in your project. Let's rename these images. Okay, this one, I'm going to rename that. You can double click that and it will let you rename that um, Steamy Boardwalk. Okay, and then layer two, I'm going to name rename that by double clicking terraces. Okay, so that makes it a little more cleaned up here. Okay, so the goal now is we're going to create 
a poster where the top half of the poster is one of these images. We're going to choose one of them. But let's see how they look. I haven't decided which one I want. Um, so we're going to actually use the halfway point here. Now your rulers might not be showing. So you're going to go to the view menu and you want to make sure rulers here is selected. Okay, and I had just unchecked it, so I'm going to check it back. Now, right now, yours probably says inches. So you, if you were to grab a guide and pull it out, so you click and then drag that, you're not going to be able to see exactly what the halfway point is of your document. So what we're going to do, I'm going to Command Z to get rid of that guide. I'm going to right mouse button in that ruler. I'm going to change that per to percents. Okay, so change it from inches to percent, and I right clicked just right in that ruler area to get that little pop up. Okay, now we know where the halfway point is in the documents. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, and you see it's coming up too for the y axis 50%, and we're going to let go. And so that's going to be nice to have. But let's say you also wanted a 50% one here. Obviously, you can drag from here, but let's do it this way. Let's create a new guide by going under the View menu to New Guide. Okay. We're going to want this to be an up and down guide, so vertical, and we're going to change it to 50. And then we have now a guide, vertical guide, as well as a horizontal guide. Okay, so let's actually uh, work with the Steamy Boardwalk image. And for now, let's just make the lower level, the lower image um, invisible. And let's make sure we're in the Move tool. You can also press V to get Move. And let's bring this up to the top of our image. Okay, it's a very big image right now. We're going to have to change the size of it. And we'll, it should just kind of snap to that guide and then we'll release it. Okay, so we need to resize this layer because you see the image is much too large for our document. Now that's actually a good thing when you think about it because that means it's a high resolution image and we don't want to have to resize an image that's actually too small for our document because that's going to lead to pixel pixelization and just uh, you know, a graininess that we don't want. So it's better to have to resize down. So we're going to actually, uh, we're going to size this down and we need to use the transform tool. So, okay, come up to edit and you're going to go down to these transform tools. Okay, transform. We're going to scale. So to scale something larger, to make it larger, to make it smaller, you're scaling the whole thing. So you're choosing scale. Okay, now we can't see the handles right now uh, in order to scale that down. So what you're going to do is we need to fit to screen. And of course you can do that by going into view, fit on screen, or you can use the command shortcut the keyboard shortcut command zero. You can notice how large that image is compared to the document. It's a very large image. So we're going to grab the, one of the handles here, one of the corners, and we're going to hold down shift. Now you always want to remember to hold down shift because you want to keep the same proportions. Otherwise it's going to distort your image. It's very important you hold down shift as you're scaling the image down. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and move it over. All right, I'm going to come on this side, do the same thing, hold down, holding down Shift. Okay, good. I want that to be all the way across. I think I want those people in there, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Maybe come over just a little more. I kind of like that. Let's fit this in screen again by doing Command Zero. All right, and since that's still fitting these handles in there, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little more. 
with command plus plus. It's a little too much. Okay, I do like this image as my banner, but let's take a look at the other one. But before we do that, we have to either put the check, click the check mark, or we have to press enter to commit to that change. Okay, and so now let's go ahead and hide the Steamy Boardwalk image, and then let's make the other one visible, the terraces image. I'm going to make sure that this is selected. The terraces is selected. Okay, so select the terraces with the move tool and then go to the edit menu and go to transform scale. Remember to reduce or enlarge is to scale an image. We're going to scale this down. All right, but we can't see the handles again. So we're going to do command zero to fit that in the screen. Now remember, we also are moving this up to the top of the document, All right? So again, we're going to probably need to do Command Zero to get those handles in there. And don't forget, please don't forget to hold down Shift as you're moving the handles. Okay, let me come over here. All right, whoops! It just because I let go of Shift, it changed that dimension. And we want to use pretty much the whole image there, uh, the bottom part of the image. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way, let's say we, we know we want it to be exactly in the middle. We want that just to fit within the width of the open document. So hold down both the Option and the Shift key, and let's see what happens. It's going to constrain both at once. We do have to commit to those changes, so check mark or press enter. And then let's make that bigger so we can see that. Okay, so over the top of our banner, we can either have the terraces or the boardwalk. And I think I'm going to go with the boardwalk. Okay, so I don't want the terraces, so you can choose the terraces if you wish. So you can actually simply click on that layer and then click the one you don't, the layer you don't want, and then I'm going to click the delete key because I'm not going to use the terraces layer. Okay, at this point we want to save our document, and you're going to save several versions of your document so you're able to access the earlier um, state of your document as you create it. But let's save it at this point. There's more to do to it, but let's save it as it is. And so make sure you're actually in the Photoshop there. So let's save as. Now you have already named it, so you can go ahead and save it. If you haven't, make sure to name it Layers Practice and then your last name. My last name is Morris. We're going to actually put this into the folder the practice picks folder but make a folder for yourself called your name your last name and then work okay so I'm going to save that into there go ahead and say okay you do want to maximize compatibility and you're always going to want to do that and you can always click this don't show again so you don't see that again Okay, so if you return to Bridge, you're going to be able to see within that folder your banner, that's poster that's being created.